wild, wild west is coming to TNT. I beg pardon? James West. Rather impressive, isn't he? Artemis Gordon. Mr. Gordon, you're such a wit. And we're kicking it off with all ten episodes of the ultimate evil villain, Dr. Miguelito Lovelace. I am a genius. Hosted by Robert Conrad. It was the only show of its time then and since. The Wild Wild West Marathon, next on TNT. Because we love a good Western as much as you do. Welcome to TNT's Wild Wild West Marathon. All ten episodes of the ultimate evil villain, Dr. Miguelito Loveless. There were more action uh, scenes in that show in the four years it was on the air than any show ever. Everything was fresh. We never recycled anything. I split those pants out. Uh, oh, probably a couple hundred times. I was seriously injured. In 1965, when the wild, wild west hit the airwaves, the west got a lot wilder. The show was original not only in its spies in the Old West concept, but in its rip-roaring action sequences. Unlike most series stars, Robert Conrad was an enthusiastic participant and rarely used a stunt double. I did 99% of them. There were a few sophisticated stunts, the trampoline stuff that I didn't know how to do, but I choreographed, and uh, along with the Whitey Hughes, uh, all the action sequences. Bravo, Mr. West. They went on and on. It wasn't a simple two-punch fight with a lot of um, a lot of actors being doubled by you know stuntmen, cuts and so on. It was it was big, it was dramatic, and it was it was it was a ballet. The same group of stuntmen appeared every week on the Wild Wild West, and that was one of the series' trickiest stunts. The audience never got hip to it. We changed their costumes, their disguises, and we used to hire the actors to fit the stuntmen. <laughs> That's the truth. With Conrad as their ringleader, the stuntmen were a tight-knit macho fraternity. We had a group that we called uh, the Heart of the Lion. And like a kind of men's club, we wore these jackets with the insignia of a lion. And we played touch football, and no one no one beat our team for 44 weeks in a row. It was, uh, it was esprit de corps. It was as close to being in the Marine Corps without being in the Corps as get. Double hammer. Right. Back in the position. Kick on! And they had the battle scars to prove it. All right. I had to run up the stairs, second story, jump off the stairs, grab the chandelier, do a kip, get my feet in this position, kick the bad guy through the wall, which subsequently put him out in the street somewhere and then continue with four or five other bad guys. Well, I went 15 feet to the concrete. I had a six inch lineal fracture of the skull, high temporal concussion and a broken fifth vertebrae. Even co-star Ross Martin and guest stars like Michael Dunn, who played the villainous Dr. Miguelito Loveless, were eager to prove their courage. I'm afraid, Miguelito. I'm afraid to die. He insisted on doing his own stunts and was injured and was carted off to the hospital. And you know, in a very strange way, <laughs> Mike was being in that club, that the injured club. I mean, it's a pretty pathetic thing to say, but there was a certain status to saying, there's my purple heart, babe. And Mike, he joined, so did Ross. Ross broke his, his arm, his leg, I believe. Um, <laughs> no one escaped injury. By 1970, politicians were calling for an end to violence on television, and the Wild Wild West was canceled. Conrad says the show only spoofed violence, but because of all the injuries, it was probably a good time to quit. Still, he has no regrets, and he's proud of his core of valiant men. For our time, uh, I say this with some humility, we were the best. I mean, we were tough, and we know it. We didn't have to prove it, and I just want to tell you guys, if any of you are watching, I appreciate it. Thank you.
the wild, wild west, next on TNT. TNT. Perfect. Beautiful. James West, Artemis Gordon, and all those dastardly dames. The wild, wild west, Saturday mornings at 10 Eastern on TNT. In 1965, a new kind of Western hit the airwaves. But it wasn't a Western. Okay, then, what was it? It was a spoof, a spy piece. It was uh, avant-garde, it was uh, high concept, and it was the only show of its time then and since. The Wild Wild West was different, unique. It was James Bond in the Old West, complete with suave spies, sexy babes, high-tech gadgets, and offbeat villains like Mike as Dr. Miguelito Loveless. <laughs> it was on the air for just five years, but it's become one of those cult favorites whose legend just keeps growing. But the birth of this legend wasn't easy. It was canceled. Uh twice before it ever made uh, the schedule. It had, had nine producers prior to uh, making uh, the date. I had changed my wardrobe three times, and characters had come in and out of the show. It finally ended up with Ross Martin and myself in the role for, I think, 102 or 104 episodes. You know, one of the charms about you is that you attract such interesting people. Cowboy movie star Rory Calhoun had been cast as Secret Service agent James West until a short, cocky, young TV actor named Robert Conrad auditioned. They, they wanted a bigger look, so they put me on these elevated boots and shoes, which made me extremely uncomfortable. And then they glued me into my pants, which made me even more uncomfortable because they wanted the matador look. They wanted the Spanish kind of, and a man who moved. So I'm saying, why are these guys making me wear these high heels? And, you know, I said, I can't even sit down with these tight pants on. These sons of bitches should have to be dressed up like this. And, uh, and then there were a lot of men who were stars who didn't get the role, and I got it. And uh, it was amazing. As a counterpoint to cool and stoic James West, they cast Ross Martin as the witty, sophisticate Artemis Gordon. Where else would you... Expect to find a bottle of properly chilled Chateau Marigny. Ross Martin was a great actor. And if you look at his disguises and his dialects, uh, because he's in drag and because it's a, quote, campy show, you forget what it takes to make... And he did it. I mean, he'd be, I'd be doing five or six stunts, Corey, five or six stunts, and Ross would be doing five, four or five disguises. Hello, me, uh, Monsieur le Docteur, Raymond le Politier. Of the Sorbonne. Ross did uh, the Johnny Carson show, and he, John said to Ross Martin, do you, do you do your own stunts? And Ross said, no, I do my own acting. <laughs> and that was a slight dig at me. But and, and Ross ended up doing a lot of his own stunts, and I ended up doing a lot of acting. I miss him. That little man with the giant rage against the whole universe. I loved Russ Martin. I loved him. He was a gentle man, intelligent. Took the edge off me. I could never get him to watch a Bears game, but he could never get me to the opera either, so, you know? And, and Russ and I just, it was salt and pepper. It was perfect. The combination of Conrad and Martin provided the spark for the wild, wild west. And the rest of the formula added the twists that made it such a success. And the ingredients were simple. These are the edict of, of the producers, Bruce Lansbury and uh, Mike Garrison. All right, Conrad takes his shirt off one, once in every movie. Russ Martin is in drag once in every movie. And then we have the elephant, and then we have the lead heavy. And that's what the show is about. This is only make-believe, isn't it? <laughs> It was a goofy concept that the American public embraced. It was escapism fair at its best. TNT's Best of the Wild Wild West Marathon continues on TNT.